Welcome to the Whiskey Rebellion, a study guide. This is a very brief overview of the events that occurred when Congress passed an excise tax on liquor. Congress needed more money to pay off war debts and build a new capital city. So in 1791, at Alexander Hamilton's request, Congress passed an excise tax on liquor. This did not go over well with many of the farmers that grew grains and corn and used some of it to make whiskey. They refused to pay the tax, saying it was too much like taxes that had been imposed by England. Many of the farmers actually used their whiskey as money in stores and to barter with other people, so the tax really cut into their buying power. As had happened with Shays' Rebellion, mobs of farmers throughout the states were rebelling against the tax. They were dancing around Liberty Trees, singing about the Whiskey Rebellion and threatening to overthrow the government. Many tax collectors were being attacked by protesters. In 1794, a tax collector had his house burned down around him. Eventually, some of the rebels decided to march on Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Unlike Shays Rebellion, where we let things get out of hand and go on for over five months, Washington called up several state militias and managed to get about 13,000 militiamen to support him and put down this rebellion. Some of the rebels gave up when they heard about the large number of militiamen that were on their way. The diehards that refused to stop rebelling were captured and put in prison. Later, Washington pardoned them. Shays Rebellion showed us that the government under the Articles of Confederation was too weak and wasn't going to be able to handle a crisis. The Whiskey Rebellion, because of its quick, successful conclusion, proved that the United States now had a strong government under the Constitution. And that is your study guide and review of the Whiskey Rebellion.